Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, you know I always give it to you straight when it comes to light guns, and there are a lot of them out there, and for a long time, well, even still, I am a gun for IR fanboy. That is the one I prefer, but I can appreciate the fact when someone comes along and does something different at a price point we've never seen before, and that was the retro shooter. They came out with those blue and red guns, and honestly, they came out with them, and it was a two IR solution, and it was just okay. And then they decided, you know what? We're gonna do four IRs. And then the gun got more accurate. And I'm thinking they're just gonna be a one trick pony. That's gonna be it. Two IR thing to four IRs definitely made me uh, stop and take caution. And then they're like, yeah, no, we're not done. We're gonna create the MX-24. I'm all, dude, what is up with these guys? Like they came out of nowhere. So then just the other day I get this message. Would you like to check out the retro shooter RS3 Reaper? Sure, what the hell is that? Oh, it's our new handgun. You already made a handgun. No, we, we made this one a lot better. Sure, whatever, I guess I'll check it out. How much better could they actually make it? Well, you're gonna find out on this episode. So let's go. So let's check out the Retro Shooter RS3 Reaper. Here it is right here. You'll see this has a similar look to another arcade gun. And if you look really closely and you know your arcade tech, you'll know what gun it is. I'm gonna tell you in a second because not everyone is gonna get it but you can see it's a very unique layout. It looks very cool, but what gun is this trying to look like? And I believe this gun is trying to look like the Time Crisis gun right here. But the unique thing about the Time Crisis gun is it had a recoil to it that simulated some blowback of a gun. But did they do that in the retro shooter? Well, let's first check out what this would do. So you can see, it's pretty aggressive. It's a pretty aggressive recoil. Now this has a 24 volt solenoid in it, but did, Retro shooter guys, put a 24 volt solenoid in theirs? No, there's no way they would do that. Actually, they did. If you look here, it's got a pretty aggressive recoil. It's not quite as aggressive. And as a matter of fact, I talked to the um, producer or creator of this and he said they did dial it back just a tiny bit, but it's pretty good. And it's, and it's very, very aggressive. Now, the unique thing they did with this that I wanna show you, I had to put this other gun down for a second, is they gave you this slider switch right here. So. I know uh, if you have kids or family members or dogs or anything like that, sometimes this recoil can be a bit too aggressive. So what they did is they had this switch so you can actually flip it to the middle position and now you'll just get the lights and it's like a single shot. If I flip it to the front position, it's just single shot recoil. So if I hold it down, I'm only gonna get yeah, it's only gonna recoil one time. Again, if I go to the middle, it's gonna stop completely. So if you wanted like nighttime play, that would be a good idea. And then if I go all the way back, I'm back to full auto. It is integrated or does integrate with MAME Hooker. Now, I'm not suggesting that MAME Hooker is something, this isn't gonna be a tutorial on MAME Hooker. It's actually quite kind of a pain in the ass to set up if you ask me. And I don't view that as a deal breaker. I think a lot of people can enjoy light guns without MAME Hooker. But what MAME Hooker does is it hooks onto MAME, MAME sends signals to the gun, so that it'll tell the gun certain things to do. I'll give you a quick example. Let's say you're shooting at something and you're out of bullets. Mame Hooker will tell the gun you are out of bullets in the game and the recoil will stop. So you'll, you won't get a recoil. And then when you reload, let's say I press this button for reload, now the game is telling the gun I have ammo again. When I go to shoot, I get the recoil again. That's one example. The other thing they put in this gun that does integrate into MAME Hooker is there's a rumble motor now in the handle. What that rumble motor will do is if you're taking damage on a game, it will rumble, you'll feel it. You'll feel like you're getting hit. That is all dependent on you setting up MAME Hooker. So it does. it is compatible. There are, there are gonna be instructions of how to do it, but I just wanna let you know that is a unique advantage that this gun has, especially over the original retro shooter gun, which didn't do that at all. The MX-24 did, the original retro shooter did not. So that is a very cool, unique advantage. So what else makes this thing cool? There's some LEDs on the handle. You can see if you press and hold this button, which is actually your navigational button when you're in the uh, user interface, it will actually change the colors uh, to like a rainbow effect. So that's pretty cool. But you can also use this pad to navigate your menu. You also get two front buttons right here. So those can also be used for menu navigation. The trigger is really nice actually. Good feel to the trigger and good overall feel to the gun. The gun has a very nice weight to it. 
that always makes it feel more substantial. It has a button right here at the bottom. Now I like this because you could map that for something like Aliens Extermination where the actual gun that that game used in the arcade did have a reload that you reload like that. So I think that is pretty cool and that is a unique thing that this gun provides. So one more thing before we actually do some gameplay. They definitely put a faster processor in this, so the tracking speed is significantly better than the original Retro Shooter. Now, I'm even saying it's better than the original Retro Shooter with the four IRs. So this also works with four IRs, but they've definitely increased something in here because, I don't know, it does feel very, very similar to gun for IR, but at a much more valuable price. It's at a cheaper price. So just keep that in mind. There are, there are disadvantages, there's give and takes to everything, uh, I, I prefer gun for IR, but if you're looking for something that's a little bit more budget friendly, I think this is going to be a very, very viable alternative. And it just looks so much cooler than the original retro shooter guns, which kind of look like toys, you know? So the, it was a budget option that looked like a toy. This does not look like a toy. There's also a mount right here. So if you wanted to put like a laser sight or something, you could actually put that right here. I have something that I could put on here later on just for fun. But yeah, so let's, let's uh, give it some gameplay and see how, it, how I feel it stacks up to Gun for IR and the original Retro Shooter. Okay, the first game we're gonna check out is not a traditional light gun game and there's a reason why I picked it. So it's gonna be Missile Command Recharged by Atari. The reason why I chose this game is because it requires some serious accuracy to play. If you imagine you're playing, you know, traditional, uh, traditional miss <laughs> I'm not doing very good. Traditional missile command, but with um, with a light gun. So you got to be pretty accurate. You can move really fast with it, and you'll notice the tracking speed is just really good. So you couldn't, if the tracking speed was bad on a gun like on a game like this, you wouldn't be able to play it. So I just I just want to show you this just to prove the point that the tracking is really really quick. And you know when you're looking at a light gun especially one that's maybe more budget. You want to make sure, hey, are you getting a good experience? And I have no doubt that the tracking speed is significantly better, even though it was pretty good in the traditional retro shooter on this. So I just wanted to show you that. It gives you a good idea of how well the gun performs. Now I'm going to jump into a traditional light gun game really quick, just so you can see a comparison with that, just so you know that it works well with um, things like this and a traditional light gun game. Okay, I lied. Not a traditional light gun game, but a directional game because it used a actually used similar to like a joystick when you played it, but you can see the tracking on it's great. The missiles are mapped to that reload button on the other uh, cuz this game doesn't necessarily have a reload, it has a power. So as you're depleting your your um, ammo, the gun will slow down if maim hooker is is enabled. So Kind of cool, another game that integrates into MAME Hooker. You can use your missiles, like I said, are gonna be this button right here. W works pretty good, right? So I'm pretty happy with the overall performance of this thing. I've been testing it for a couple days now, and I think definitely tracking speed, performance perspective, it might not be exactly as good as Gun for IR, but it is pretty close and I cannot complain. I think the combination of the four IR system and then the new faster microprocessor they used in here does give it a unique advantage over the other retro shooter guns that we bought you know back in the day not back in the day it was like a couple of years ago so you know I got to give it a good score as far as tracking speeds concerned we're gonna go with a light gun game everyone loves this game uses a traditional hap gun this game did not have recoil but it does now with this gun I also shut off the crosshairs so you can get a good idea of accuracy of the game. So, so far so good. I loved this game as a kid. This was one of the ones I really liked. I think I've owned the game like, oop, I think I've owned the game like a million times. It's one of those games I've bought the original version of and then sold like, I swear to God, like 10 times. It, it is a fun game, but it does get old after a while. So it's nice to have it on a platform like this. So you can see, I mean, it works great without the crosshairs. Some people like playing this with the crosshairs. I prefer without it. Uh, with most of these builds, you can turn it on and off. And if you're just using MAME without a build, you can just turn the crosshairs on and off depending on what you like. I personally am used to playing it like an arcade game. So I would prefer to have the crosshairs off like it would have been in the original arcade. All right, let's, let's do this. All right, these dudes come down from above. Let's see if we can get them both. Got them. All right, now there's a power up right there. Oh, I got it. All right. Blow up that canister. This dude's a son of a bee. All right, we got him. Get the grenade. Oh shit, I probably just shouldn't have used the grenade. 
but you get the point, right? Works really, really good. I'm very, very happy with it. But now let's do, there's a tracking test that's part of, uh, this is Chris Coolmod's build. In the beginning, I was using Integrum Retro's build, and now I'm using Chris Coolmod's build. So both very good light gun builds if you're looking for a light gun build. Chris Coolmod put in a mouse tracking speed thing. It's like, it rates the, um, I can't remember what the terminology is, but it's like the uh, polling rate of a mouse. So you can use it to kind of check the speed of the gun. So we'll do that really quick, see what we get. And if I'm um, not too lazy, maybe I can also do that same test with the gun for IR so we can compare. Okay, so now we're gonna do the polling rate test, but I'm gonna use the gun for IR first. Okay, we're gonna do a reset, and now we're just gonna say start. So we're getting about average of, let's just call it for giggles, like 140 hertz or 145 hertz. So what we're gonna need to do to calculate that, all right, 1,000 divided by 145. So we're looking at about 6.89 milliseconds on the gun for IR. Uh, the gun for IR usually averages about four, so let's just give it four for giggles. That's about what it gets. And this test isn't the most scientific thing in the world. So now let's go and do the new Retro Shooter RS3 Reaper. All right, so we're averaging about on the RS3 Reaper, let's call it about six. Let's just say that's about, oh wow, that's fast. Damn, it's actually really good. Let's just use the max of 860, even though the average is really good. So 860 would be 1,000 divided by 860. Damn, that's 1.1 millisecond. That's kind of nuts. Okay, well, let's test it against the original retro shooter. So just keep this in mind. The RS3 Reaper is 1.1 milliseconds. The gun for IR is four. So actually right now the Reaper's tracking faster than the gun for IR. Let's try the original retro shooter and see what that gets. Okay, original retro shooter right here. Let's click to start here. I gotta back up just a tiny bit. Okay, original retro shooter is looking at, let's use the max of 115. Let's do a stop. Now that's gonna be 1000 divided by 115. Damn, eight milliseconds. So that means they've cut down the gun from eight milliseconds lag to one milliseconds lag. And like I said, that's not, it's not like super scientifically accurate, but I told you it's significantly better than these old ones. So if you're looking at a light gun and you want something that's good at a good price, this RS3 Reaper is looking pretty damn good. Sorry, that's not the RS3 Reaper. This is, this is the RS3 Reaper. It's looking pretty good. Sorry for the dark picture, but oh yeah, the Reaper. Come on, baby, don't fear the Reaper. Don't fear the Reaper and take your hand. I'm gonna get demonetized, but I don't give a rat's ass cause I don't do this for money. All right, I'm gonna close you out and give you some final thoughts what I think about the RS3 Reaper. But I'm gonna do it with one of my favorite games, which is Virtucop. Everyone loves this game. If you don't, you kind of suck because it's just a good game. And it's Sega. Who doesn't love Sega? Sega made some of the best games of this time period. It's not loud enough. It needs to be louder. Go, oh, let's wake up the whole damn house. All right, so what do I think about this sucker right here? The Retro Shooter RS3. I think if you're looking for a light gun that isn't gonna blow the budget and it works pretty damn good as you can see, I'm thinking this, you know what, Retro Shooter guys? You keep up in the damn ante. What's going on with you guys? You guys are crazy. I don't even know who you are. You're like some random guy that I messaged. I've never actually talked to you on the phone. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're creating things for the, the community that are like really cost effective. And this thing is pretty damn cool. And this is just the prototype. It's just the prototype. So I don't know. I'm only, I can only assume that the one that's gonna come out is even better than this one. And uh, this is pretty damn good. So if you're looking for this thing, you know what, I gotta shut this off, it's too damn loud. I'm sorry, you're just too damn loud. I'm going crazy, I've had no nights of sleep. I don't care, I don't care anymore. Something I almost failed to mention are the dip switch settings on the bottom of the gun right here. They can set various settings of the gun, like player one and player two, as well as shutting off the rumble motor or changing the recoil strength. So that is something you can do. And I'll flash the dip switch settings on the screen so you have those, but they should be available somewhere on the Retro Shooter website. The other thing that I'd like to say, just general feedback, is the recoil on it is pretty good. It's not bad. But for 24 volt, I kind of was expecting it to hit a little harder, like this gun, but I'm still very happy with it. I just think it would be nice if it was just a tiny bit stronger. 
that's really the only thing I can nitpick because the tracking speed is so good and everything else is so good about it that I really don't have much to say as far as critical feedback. So if there's a possibility that when they run the production one, they can just up the power on it just ever so slightly, I think it would make a little bit of a difference. I wasn't expecting it to be as hard hitting as this one, but it's still pretty good. I'm gonna go play some pinball, okay? I still like this shit, but it's kind of all about the pinball these days. But if you're looking for a light gun, I don't think you can go wrong with this thing. It's gonna be available probably right now. And I'll have a link in the description to it and you'll see the pricing and all that stuff. So if you're looking to get into light guns, give it a shot. I don't think you'll be disappointed. It is light years beyond the original one. I gotta hand it to your retro shooter guys. You did good. You done did good guys. All right, that is it. And we will see you. Oh. Good next one.